Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will learn all about GBS landing system or GLS. As usual, we will only look at the key points we pilots need to know without getting deeper into it. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up if you have found it helpful. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. First things first, what is GBAS? GBAS stands for Ground-Based Augmentation System. It is an alternative to the conventional ILS or instrument landing system. GBAS provides differential corrections and integrity monitoring of GNSS, thus facilitating GNSS-based approach. As we know, GNSS approaches are considered either non-precision approaches or approaches with vertical guidance. And this is due to the insufficient accuracy achieved by the GNSS signal. Similar to SBAS or Satellite Based Augmentation System, which by the way I have made a video about it explaining everything you need to know about SBAS and I'm uh, putting the uh, link to it in the description below, which significantly improves GNSS accuracy and help perform LPV approaches. GBAS landing system on the other hand considered a precision approach due to the high accuracy it provides. We will discuss the main differences between SBAS and GBAS in the end of this video. Now, let's repeat what we have said so far in simpler terms. A GBAS is a system which improves the GNSS signal accuracy, thus allowing aircraft to perform precision approaches called GLS or GBAS landing system. Let's have a look at now GBAS components and principle of operation. The installation of GBAS is as follows. We have three to four reference antennas on or near an airport that precisely pinpointed meaning the location of these antennas is well known. These antennas receive GNSS signals. These received signals are then transmitted to a GBAS system or substation located near the reference antennas where the signal offset is measured and the necessary corrections are made. After that, the signal is transmitted to the aircraft using VDB or VHF data link broadcast signal. The onboard GNSS receiver, referred to as the MMR or multi-mode receiver, receives both GNSS satellite signals as well as data corrections from the GBAS system, thus correcting the aircraft position allowing for better accuracy, usually less than one meter. Here is an aerial view of an airport that employs a GBAS landing system and its components. Next, let's look at the GBAS advantages. Unlike the ILS, where every single runway must be equipped with two localizer and two glide slopes antennas in order to uh, provide ILS approaches from both ends of the runway and high maintenance costs and yearly calibrations uh, exercises, GBAS on the other end, only one um, system might be fitted on the airfield and serve all runways with precision approaches plus non-linear approaches or curved approaches. And it can also serve nearby airports if within 23 nautical mile radius, which is a big advantage for both airlines as well as um, airport local authorities. Now, flying-wise, when it comes to flying an ILS or a GLS, it is exactly the same thing. You have both horizontal and vertical guidance as well as range information. The only difference is the in the ILS, uh, there's a frequency, whereas the GLS, we have a channel. The rest is all the same, keeping GLS training to a minimum. Last but not least, let's look at the difference between SBAS and GBAS. The SBAS, or Satellite-Based Augmentation System, covers an entire country or continent. There are um, uh, multiple types of ISPAS. We have the uh, WAS, Wide Area Augmentation System, employed by the US. Uh, we have the uh, IGNOS by the European, MSAS by Japan, GAIGAN by the Indians, and so on. Next, we have the GBAS. GBAS is a local type of augmentation system and serves one or two adjacent airports. Previously, um, the GBAS was known as the LAS, or Local Area Augmentation System. GBAS accuracy is substantially greater than that of an SBAS. SBAS signals, as name applies, are received from geostationary satellite in space. 
GPS, however, is a ground-based system where all antennas are installed on the ground and communicate with the aircraft using VHF data link one-way transmissions. With SPS, you can fly an LPV approach, which is classified under approaches, uh, category of APV, approaches with vertical guidance. GBS, however, enables you to fly a GLS approach with CAT2 and CAT3 approaches. Now, let's summarize what we have learned so far. Non-augmented GNSS signals do not have the sufficient accuracy for precision approaches. SPAS enables accurate navigation using GNSS, plus approaches with vertical guidance, such as LPV. GBAS enables approaches and landings using GNSS to a CAT 2 or 3 minimums. GBAS corrections are derived by comparing locations of precisely known reference stations or antennas with the signals received from GNS GNSS satellites. The measurements is then uh, transmitted to GBAS substation where the offset is processed and the corrections are made and calculated and transmitted to the aircraft using VDB or VHF data broadcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you guys and assist in any way that I could. And um, as usual, until the next video, see ya.